So I just finished watching the new episode of Mandalorian season three. I'm so happy it's back. Like I've missed this show. It's my favorite. As always, uh, Grogu uh, and Mando, of course, both were stealing the show. <laughs> we're stealing the show. Like when they're going to get the IT droid back. <laughs> And Mando is just sitting and like, you know, Baba Fisk from like, I think Revenge or from the last Star Wars movie. Mandalorian, Mando is just sitting in that small little shop hunched over. I'm just like, I could not stop laughing. And then Baby Yoda, Baby Yoda Grogu is trying to grab a little Baba Fisk. And I'm just like, he's not a pet. He's not your toy. But Baby Yoda wants him so I can't. Yeah, that was a secret they were trying to keep, all right. I have a tear running down my eye right now, or running down my cheek. Oh my god! No wonder they didn't want to give you a title, they didn't want to give you anything. Zeb! Zeb is in this episode! Zeb from Rebels? Lassant? Like, live action Zeb! We have live action Zeb now. And it's vo he's voiced by Steve Bloom, obviously. I was. I. I can't believe it. I can't freaking believe it. I just, I can't stop saying, oh my god, we have live action Zeb. Like, I. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. This is getting interesting. Uh, I'm not surprised that Moff Gideon's ship, uh, blew up, blew up, um, and his body's not there and he was taken. I'm not surprised because it's like, um,. You know, we have that chick that was from not from last week's episode or two episodes ago where she like tortured the doctor. I'm not surprised that she's still like, you know, I wonder if she's the one that took Moff Gideon, but also they found Beskar armor. So like a Mandalorian must have taken Moff Gideon. So I don't know who, what Mandalorian would take Moff Gideon. That chick is a Mandalorian or an ex-Mandalorian. I don't know. Maybe it was Sabine Wren to, like, find the Darksaber. I don't know. I have many questions, but I'm not surprised Moth Gideon is alive. I just want to know who the hell took him. Also now have Bo-Katan, who's able to, like, walk both ways because she's seen a mythosaur. She's been in the living waters, but now she can remove her helmet. And so she's going to be reuniting rogue or Mandalorians back with this Mandalorian covert so they can take Mandalore back. And my, th well, I'm wondering if that includes going to find Sabine Wren. Because the we already have someone in live action who's been casted as Sabine. Who is to say that she hasn't already, like, done some work as Sabine in Mandalorian Season 3 and they just, like, did not tell us and they just announced her casting as, like, a late casting. I'm not gonna get my hopes up, but she is kind of a rogue Mandalorian. Who is to say? You, you never know. First off, first off, way better Mandalorian episode than last week. I had a lot of fun with last week's episode, but it was just, it felt, like, so disjointed. Love the cameos, though. But this episode, I mean, granted, this is like we have this episode and then next week's episode and then The Mandalorian's over. But like this week's episode so far, like I have a feeling based on Bad Batch season two and this current episode, or at least where Mandalorian's going, I have a feeling I, I think where we're going. Because they mentioned Admiral Throng and obviously in the Ahsoka trailer that came out, they said that Throng is like the new heir to the Empire, which like... I mean, kind of makes sense. It's Throng. Like, he was so intimidating and scary um, in Rebels and just, like, so conniving and cunning. And shocker, not really, that Moff Gideon is back in this episode. Not really surprised. But based on what he says here about how, like, the Jedi, the clones, and the Mandalorians each had, a, had something unique and special to them... Like, obviously the Mandalorians have their Beskar armor. The clones were, like, clones. They could be, like, become servants or slaves to the Republic. And the Jedi obviously had, like, the Force and stuff. I fully believe, based on, like, Dark Troopers and what potentially they were doing with cloning in Bad Bats Season 2, I have a feeling where we're leading is to, like, like some type of, like, clone Dark Troopers or at least the first, like, stage of Dark Troopers in a sense. Where, like, they have the cloning, like, ability and their servants to the, like, New Republic or the upcoming First Order, but, like, what the clones were to, like, with the Republic, 
But then I feel like, obviously also in season two, we had like that clone assassin. So I feel like we're leading to clone assassins that potentially are wearing Beskar armor. So they're trained warriors or assassins of like this new government. And then they're wearing Beskar armor like a man Lauren. And maybe they have the skills of said Jedi. So I, I think we're leading towards that, like the best of all three worlds. And um, I, had a, I have a feeling that like they're gonna test all of that out on crosshairs, on crosshair potentially, like with a Dr. Hemlock and all of those like clone prisoners they had. I feel like that's where we're leading, where they're gonna become like the first batch of like dark troopers, or at least the first batch of some new scary thing that maybe the Bad Batch crew is gonna have to go up against in season three, but uh, I don't know, man. It's looking scary. <laughs> they separated Din and Grogu. I'm not, I'm not okay. I'm like freaking out because like Din has to just battle Moff Gideon on his own and like I think Din can handle him, but like at the same time I'm so nervous because Moff Gideon is just like intense. And then Grogu is left with the three pituitary guards, the red guys, with like those sticks, those electric sticks, and I'm just like, please, no, I, I, no, 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 don't kill Grogu if you kill, I don't think they would, but you just never know with Dave, he killed Tex, so like, I don't know. This is what they probably meant when they said we were gonna get emotional. Obviously, Grogu is too young to take the creed, um... Unless one of his parents was, like, around. And Dan just casually says, like, well, he doesn't say it casually. He's like, what if I adopted him? What if I became officially Daddy Mando? <laughs> I... We all probably knew it was coming. We already knew that Grogu was his son. But, like, this is official confirmation. Grogu is now Din's child. And I... <laughs> I'm so happy. So happy. I'm so happy. I really liked that ending. Like, grief gave them a little hut. A house. They have a house. So that in between missions they can just chill and Din can watch his now son grow up and like just watch him and I just... <laughs> I'm so happy. This, like, obviously episode six was a rough patch for me, but this just was a nice ending. I'm very happy, and I can't wait for more Din and Grogu adventures in season four because those are my favorite, but this last episode really hit me in the feels. It was really good, and I'm, I just, I had a fun time. That was season three of The Mandalorian. Now, I know a lot of people probably felt the finale was underwhelming. Yeah, the season kind of felt a little disjointed in parts here, especially with episode six. I did enjoy the cameos. But there were things about this season that just kind of felt a little like disjointed. It felt like this was, cause this, obviously the show is titled The Mandalorian and obviously The Mandalorian is not just Din Djarin. It is like the whole people, the population of Mandalore. But that being said, the show started out as a Din Djarin Mando and Grogu show. It started off with this single Mando being a bounty hunter for the guild, finding this child and not giving him up and protecting him. So really the show may be called The Mandalorian and The Mandalorian is a people. But that being said, the show started off with Din and Grogu and it felt like this season, Din and Grogu almost didn't feel like main characters in a sense, if that makes sense. They kind of felt like main supporting characters. Obviously we want to reclaim Mandalore and get that back, but my favorite aspects of the Mandalorian show have been Din and Grogu. And the fact that like, yeah, Din is a Mandalorian, so obviously we want him to like walk the way, we want him to get back Mandalore. No, it just felt like a very Bo-Katan and Din season. And while I do love Bo-Katan a lot, I'm not, I'm not here for the Bo-Katan Din romance that people are like thinking is happening. I don't want that. I just felt like they kind of, the Mando and Grogu, especially Grogu, I felt like in aspects of this season just kind of felt like he took a back seat. And that's not a bad thing necessarily. I mean, I guess it is because the show, a lot of people love the show because of Grogu and Din. And while there were a lot of great Din and Grogu moments, especially in episode eight, when like they were fighting together, when like he saw Moff Gideon fighting Din and Din was like on the breaking point and Grogu comes in with the IGU and he's like, 
pushing that button like, no, bitch, that's my dad. I gotta help my dad. He's just getting all grumpy. And then he's using the force, which I love when he's like, the, he's in, locked in the room with all those guards and he's just jumping around <laughs> on the ceiling or not on the ceiling, but on like the, lamp, the light flicks. being like, ha ha, you can't catch me, bitch. <laughs> when he tried to say this is the way in episode three, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> For some great din and Grogu moments this season, but I feel like a lot of fans, some I think some fans forget, and I think some of the people working on the show forget that yes, the show is called The Mandalorian, but we fell in love with this show because of Mando and Grogu. This was this brand new character and we fell in love with him. That's not to say you can't have like other characters and cameos like take the forefront once in a while, but when the main thing your show is about that people have come to love, the Mando and Grogu become sort of like get pushed back to the sidelines sometimes, then it's like, what's the point? Because the Mando showed up in parts of the Book of Boba Fett without Grogu and people still were there for it. So we've come to love Grogu and the Mando together. We've also come to love them separately. And people do love Bo-Katan because we've known her for a longer time than we've known Din. But if you want to focus on Bo-Katan, I feel like you should do that in a separate show. Now, the show is called Mandalorian at the end of the day, but we've come to love the Mandalorian because of the character of Din, because of the character of Grogu. I mean, I did love the Bo-Katan stuff we got this season. I mean, I do like that speech of Din being like, the Darksaber means nothing to me in my covet. I'm following you, Lady Kreese, because I see the honor and the loyalty you have. That's why I'm following you. We see the honor and the valor you have, and that's why I'm following you. I'm following you for your character. I like that speech he gives her, and I like that Bo-Katan is willing to help him get to the waters, wants to unite all the Mandalorians together, being like, we gotta stop. Because I remember in Clone Wars, her being like, or even like um, with Boba Fett being like, oh, you're, you're a donor, you're a clone, or oh, he's part of them. But now she's like, we need to all unite together and take back Mandalore because really, she speaks the truth when she says that Mandalore is a very powerful planet and a very powerful people. The thing that's really screwed them over in many cases has been themselves, the dividing faction. You got Death Watch. Like, look at the Night of a Thousand Tears. Like, you've had so many groups within Mandalore, and that's kind of what's, like, tearing your planet apart. I mean, it didn't help them all came out and had Death, was a part of Death Watch, and, like, the leader of it in Clone Wars. But she's speaking the truth when she's like, we got to unite all the Mandalorians together and take back Mandalore. I don't care if you follow the creed or if you don't, if you're a Jedi Mandalorian, like we all got to unite together. I like her taking that stance because you're stronger together than separate, apart. And she does get the Darksaber this season, which if it was a technicality that she got the Darksaber, which on one hand I was like, but like it's a big deal for her to have a saber and it just kind of felt like this like half-assed thing and but on the other hand I was like well I didn't want her to fight Din and I didn't want her to hurt Din and I didn't want them to fight so I mean she got it but I'm a little conflicted about it. I think the last two episodes were probably my favorite of this season potentially especially the last episode where you have like the Din and Moff Gideon fight was really cool. Grogu versus the Batarian guards is very cool. Bo-Katan coming in there and just like having a full on rage mode when she was like trying to beat the crap out of Moff Gideon and he breaks the dark saber, which I did not see coming. But you know, there's this thing called the Mythosaur that is alive in the living waters. So um, I'm pretty sure the Mythosaur is going to be the new thing that unites all the Mandalorians would make sense. Like it's their crest. It's a thing they worship. So obviously that probably makes more sense than the dark saber. Mandalorians fighting like the Imperial Mandalorians, like in the sky fighting each other. Like Bo-Katan is stabbing people with the dark saber. You have the armor throwing hammers at people. This reminded me so much of all the fight scenes in Clone Wars with the Mandalorians fighting in the air and I loved it. Just the cinematography and like the visual effects and the visuals in episode eight were so gorgeous, like the sky shots too. That's why I gotta give credit to Star Wars is I think a lot of the time they they have really beautiful visuals compared to some of the things that Marvel's doing right now. And I think the fights choreography and fight scenes in episode eight were very well done. I've enjoyed the majority of season three of The Mandalorian. It's not been my favorite season, but I am hoping now that Din is kind of like doing side missions for the New Republic as like an independent contractor. I'm hoping we get to see 
more like Grogu and Din traveling together, going to random planets to help people once in a while, just like random little things with minor cameos, not like big cameos. I just want like a Din and Grogu going on mini adventure season. That's what I want. As much as I love all the cameo stuff so much, like him meeting Ahsoka and like Ahsoka meeting Grogu and like all the Luke stuff and like the Zeb thing was amazing. I, at the end of the day, this show is The Mandalorian. And for me, it's the Din and Grogu stuff that keeps me coming back for more because I just love them both so much. And let me know what you guys thought about season three of The Mandalorian down in the comment section. I will see you guys with another video fairly soon. Bye guys.